I'm Danielle Dumer. I'm the Chief Information Officer and Commissioner for the City of Chicago's Department of Innovation and Technology. I'm Charlie Catlett. I'm a computer scientist at Argonne National Laboratory and the University of Chicago. It was about seven years ago when we were in a meeting and the city was talking about replacing the street lights with LED lights. And so I thought, oh, maybe they could put something else up for scientists as well. And that began a long conversation with myself and Danielle and a whole host of scientists at different universities and at Argonne about what we would place on those poles. Uh, that eventually became what we now uh, see as the array of things. I think there were things that we were hoping to to learn from a science point of view. And then there were many conversations with the city about the kind of things that the city would like to, to gain from, not just the data that comes out of the instrument, but the whole project of involving scientists and students and others. From our point of view, from a science standpoint, the first is that we, we wanted to build a system that we could remotely program that would be reliable despite being in very harsh conditions. And so there was a tremendous amount of work just in, in developing that resilient platform. Um, and then there are many domain scientists from atmospheric scientists to air quality and health people that gave us input on what sort of things to measure. And so we ended up with um, uh, air quality as one of the uh, one of the important things that we measure and uh, scientists want to understand how traffic patterns or uh, weather affects air quality and, and what might the city do if there were some way to uh, improve air quality by changing a schedule or installing uh, green, uh, green spaces and things like that. From a city's perspective, um, our Department of Public Health, they um, have environmental pers uh, inspectors and they monitor air quality and issues related to air quality. So this would be another tool for them to get information about that and help them um, prioritize or um, determine what interventions might be need to be taken where. Uh, similarly, um, in the past, if we wanted to understand traffic patterns, how uh, our, our streets are being used by pedestrians, by bicyclists, etc. We would have to do very manual counts using people and so that meant doing those counts infrequently. And so with a tool like the Array of Things where we'll be able to get that information on a more real-time basis so that our traffic management uh, team in the Department of Transportation or our city planners can use that information um, to inform how they're managing the city and how they're planning for land use in different areas. The Department of Planning and Development is especially interested in, in seeing how changes that they might make to neighborhoods that may have been zoned one way previously, what impact that's having on those areas over time, so there'll be data at more micro level to understand that and so that's that's a, um, a great opportunity. Also the Department of Transportation um, is uh, committed to Vision Zero and the idea of eliminating pedestrian deaths um, and so uh, they're interested in using the tool to collect new data about what's happening around pedestrian safety and bicycle safety in our intersections so we hope that through use cases like that, we will be able to impact the safety of our neighborhoods.